Britain has been facing criticism for taking too long to target people with links to Russian President Vladimir Putin. And now, to make it easier to sanction Russian oligarchs, Britain could introduce new legislation. The British government has struggled to find evidence to justify targeting individuals with links to Putin. Since Putin invaded Ukraine, Britain imposed sanctions on nine wealthy Russians. And in the recent move, UK has sanctioned two more Russians. Those are industrialist Alisha Usmanov and former Deputy Prime Minister Igor Shuvalov. Usmanov is a metals and telecoms tycoon who is worth 18.4 billion US dollars, according to the United Kingdom. He is best known in Britain for his investments in Premier League soccer clubs, Arsenal and Everton. Shuvalov is a former aide to Putin who now chairs Russian bank VEB. The bank is itself under Western sanctions. Usmanov and Shuvalov have had their British assets frozen. They also face travel bans. British citizens and businesses are barred from dealing with them. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that UK will continue to exert every power to inflict maximum economic pain on Putin and his war machine. There have been growing calls for Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich and others to be included in sanctions. Abramovich is the owner of the Chelsea Soccer Club, but the British government has said it must have a solid legal case that their finances are linked to Putin's administration. In the UK, the threshold of, for designation of sanctions is low. A proper dossier of evidence is required. Else, as per legal experts, it could be challenged in court and the government could be sued for large sums because of the high bar still re required to impose sanctions. Britain is reportedly seeking to change the law. Meanwhile, Foreign Secretary Liz Truss has said that legal threats would not prevent it from sanctioning Russian oligarchs. Truss said a group of seven meeting of uh, foreign ministers would discuss further sanctions on Russia. I'm very clear that legal threats will have no impact on our ability to sanction oligarchs and we will continue to work through our list, we will continue to sanction oligarchs and there is nowhere for any of Putin's cronies to hide. We are absolutely determined to sanction Russian oligarchs. We've already sanctioned over 100 individuals and organisations. Uh, we've got a further list we are working through. We have put in place the toughest package of sanctions in British history on Russia, including bank freezes, including freezes on the central bank, including export controls, and we will do more. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine enters its ninth day, we on correspondent Anas Malik is getting us the latest details en route to the Ukrainian city of Lviv in our next report. I'm currently in Ukraine traveling towards Lviv uh, from the border. The first city that I crossed was uh, uh, Mastaka. Uh, there is a general sense of uh, anxiety and scare uh, to the point if I can just show you that uh, there is no light on the roads even. Uh, the street lights are off. You'd see a couple of uh, checkpoints, check posts on the road, uh, uh, guarded by the militias, by the army, by the police. Um, and um, yeah, uh, so uh, uh, a lot of people have been seen fleeing uh, the country. Lesser cars have been going in and you'd be uh, very lucky to find a ride or a taxi in case if you're crossing from Ukraine, uh, from Poland into Ukraine. On the other hand, uh, it is also pertinent to uh, note and uh, mention that uh, uh, there are tens and thousands of cars who are waiting and won't be wrong to say it's a kilometers long line, uh, five, maybe seven kilometers long line uh, that's there on the Ukraine-Poland uh, border waiting to cross over into Poland into safety. In Mastaka, Ukraine, for Vion, World is One. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.